Hey guys, Nick here. Today we're going to talk about the Arbiter Battlecruiser T6. So this ship comes with our number one trait I would recommend for basically all the builds that I'd say 99% of the people are probably running in this game, our energy weapon builds. So energy weapon builds, anything that's running beams, cannons, you know, so fire at will, beam overload, cannon scatter volley, Rapid fire, you surgical strikes, our exceeded rate of limits, our reroute powered or we weapons. That I'm not too familiar with the pilot one. Um, so this trait is our number one recommended to buy. Yeah, you know, so you're building the new ship, you're new to the game. Yeah, you know, the number one trait you want to buy first is this one: emergency weapon cycle. So on emergency powered weapons. So if you don't know. This is what an emergency powder weapons is. It's an engineering ability. It starts at ensign, goes to lieutenant, and then lieutenant commander on the final version is a point five second activation, forty five second recharge, repairs disable weapon systems, and it's sixteen point six percent bonus energy weapon damage. So for those who don't know, there's a bit of math behind in the game. You've got your cat one, which is anything that says damage. So say this said 16.6% energy weapon damage. That would be category one. So category one in generic terms mean it's a it's a flat modifier from your base damage. So if you do 100, it's a 16% increase. So 100, 16.6, pretty simple. You would have 16.6 more damage. But a final modifier is... Category 2 is a final modifier, so it adds up everything, bonusing you, everything that's going on, and gives you it on top of that. So 16.6% bonus energy weapon damage for an energy weapon build is quite helpful. But that's just to proc our trait. Our trait it gives us minus 50% weapon power cost for 30 seconds. So if you don't know weapon power i'll jump i'm going to jump up the space so i can show you weapon power is also a damage modifier so for energy weapons the higher the weapon power you have the more damage you'll do so if you have 125 weapon power you're doing the most damage you can at that point it, that's before isomags so that's another video topic if you have isomags your max weapon power can be quite a lot higher like i i've topped a build added it's 176 resting and i've seen people go all the way up to 250 weapon power but if we come over here we we crank our weapon power all the way up with no gear on i think let's see i was gonna say 120 but yeah about 120 there we go so 120 weapon power and that would mean if i had weapons equipped on this build we would have more damage but that's that. Uh, but our weapon power cost reduction. So if you, uh, I'm not sure, sure, it should say it. So we'll hover these standard issue phases, but see how they say minus 10 weapon power to self when firing this weapon. So as you fire your weapon, you'll go from 120 to 110 as you fire this weapon. So it's 110, 120, you know, 120, 110, 100 as you're firing your weapons. So your weapon power is going up, doing less damage, as there's this resets. It comes, it goes up and down, but your negative 50 power reduction means instead of doing minus 10, this will do minus 5, which means you're doing more damage consistently with this weapon because your weapon power drain is less. And 20% fire cycling haste for energy weapons for 30 seconds. This also means for, so these are both 30 second cooldowns, and emergency power to weapons with the correct cooldown reduction have a 15 second. GCD, which means global cooldown. I don't know what the D actually, but it's global cooldown something. GCD. If someone knows the actual correct final part for the acronym, please let me know down below. But global cooldown, so if you have the right cooldown reduction, 15 seconds, which means this trait is up 100% of the time. So that basically means you have a 20% damage increase automatically because if you're firing your weapons 20% faster that means you're doing 20 percent more damage because you're getting 20 percent more shots in there might be a more you uh more intricate math behind it you know diminishing returns targets here and you're firing but it's a standard like a as basic numbers go it's a 20 percent increase and the 50 percent power reduction i wouldn't give you a flat number on that but you know say you're you know this the game mechanics behind that meaning 
the more power you have on your weapons, the more damage you're joining. So the the more power, more negative weapon power cost you have, the better off you are. So this being is our number one first to get trait. I, I, I'm gonna correct myself there. Starship trait on any energy weapon build that you run, and this is run on all our builds, our tank builds, our dupe builds, our you know even our sometimes our supportive builds. You know, anything that is firing energy weapons is far, is using this trait. And then th that can probably be one of the few traits I can say that about. So say, you know, if you're doing cannon scatter volley to fire, well, you're using different traits. Say you're doing beam overload to scatter volley or beam overload to fire, well, you're using different traits because, you know, some a lot of the time cannon scatter volley will use like, you know, AOE traits, but with beam overload being single target, you're not you're using single target increase to, you know because you're not getting those aoe hits in but that's enough about this trait you know looking down at my timer going not everyone doesn't want to listen to a too long video about one trait but basically to review if you're thinking about builds and you know wanting to get better and you're running energy weapons so your your beams your cannons your dual beam banks your single cannons your your dual your sorry your wide arc phases and all that you know good stuff you want this trait so that'll be all for today if you like this video please like comment and subscribe and we'll see you all next time thanks bye